Hey folks, it's Matt. I want to show you how to create a custom exception today using C Sharp and Visual Studio. So here I am in Visual Studio 2022 running a .NET 7 application. It doesn't have to be .NET 7, but this happens to be one. And in this starter code here, I have it uh, prompting the user to say like, hey, what's my current balance? And then how much do you want to withdraw? And the user's going to type in an amount that's then parsed, right? So uh, if the user uh, didn't type in a valid number, that's going to throw a format exception, uh, which is then going to be caught because we have a try catch here uh, going on between lines 9 and 32. So I'm assuming you have some familiarity with try catch here, uh, but that exception should be thrown and caught down here in line 25. Now there's a couple other exceptions that might be thrown as well. So if you tried to withdraw a negative amount of money from your bank account, well, that's going to throw an invalid operation exception. And if you try to uh, withdraw more than your balance, that's also going to throw an invalid operation exception. So let's see how this works right now uh, with the app as it's currently written. Okay, so your st starting balance is 4,200. I want to withdraw 50, uh, and it tells me it did. So yes, I do want to do another transaction. I want to withdraw negative uh, 50. And here we threw an invalid operation exception because we entered a negative amount. So that throw uh, happened right here and it took us down to this block on line 2931. Okay, um, so yes, I want to do another transaction. I want to withdraw, uh, in this case, I want to withdraw $5,000. I only have 4150, so this should be an overdraft. So this cannot withdraw more than your starting balance. Your starting balance is now uh, 4150. Okay, cool. And then the last thing that's built into the starting point of this code is if I want to withdraw. Um, uh, soda, not really a number, is it? I hit enter and it tells me, hey, the withdrawal amount must be a valid number in, in numeric form. Do I want to uh, do another transaction in this case? No, I don't. And the application closes. Okay. So here, if we tried to parse um, soda in this case, it actually threw a format exception, took us down here. And then if either of these two blocks here were hit, the the negative or zero amount of, to withdraw or withdrawing over the balance, uh, that took us down to here. But let's say that we wanted a little bit more control. We wanted a little bit more information uh, in an exception. And so we chose to actually create our own exception object with its own properties. Well, we can do that in .NET. It's just really a class. So I'm going to right click on my project. I'm going to hit add. I'm going to say I'm going to add new class. I want to choose to call it to create my new class. This is going to be an overdraft exception. Now, by convention, we end all exception types in the word exception. That's just a, a .NET ism. It helps us know that something is an exception. And this created it as an internal class. I'm going to make that public because that I tend to make things public unless I have a good reason to make them private or internal. Okay. So here, this overdraft exception is an exception. It inherits from exception. If I wanted to, I could make it inherit from invalid operation exception or some other exception. But exception is usually a good default to start out with when you're when you're inheriting from another exception. And this is really actually all I need to do now in order to create this new exception. I can actually now create it and throw it, but I can't create it without with any parameters. So let's think about what information I need for an overdraft. Well, I think. <laughs> There's GitHub Copilot helping me out and says, hey, Matt, you want to add a constructor? Well, yes, I do. Uh, I think I need to have information about the balance as well as the uh, the amount the user tried to withdraw. And I think if I have those two things, I'm going to have a decent amount of information on my exception. So here I might create a public uh, decimal uh, balance, the git, and basically a private set, uh, or an init only set really, and then public decimal withdraw amount, which is also a git. I'm going to say balance equals balance, withdraw amount equals withdraw amount. It's kind of the, the traditional way of doing things with an exception object. I'll show you a different way of doing it in a second. Um, but this is going to work out pretty well for us. This is going to let me create my exception and the like. Uh, but there's a problem with this in that all exceptions have a message. And right now, if I do this, the message for this exception is going to be the default of null. So 
I want to actually call out the base constructor for this, the basic constructor on exception. And there's actually four of them. There's a parameterless one. There's one that takes in a message. There's one that takes in a message and an inner exception. This is good for nested exceptions. And then there's some uh, advanced ones that have more serializations, things related to it. In this case, we're going to want to generate a uh, some sort of a custom message. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say, uh, you uh, your withdraw would overdraft your account. Starting balance, and here I'm going to put in uh, the balance. I'm going to format as a currency by colon c. Uh, withdraw amount colon uh, withdraw amount, and then again colon c to format as a currency. So this guy here is actually going to be great. It's going to give us an ex a message property on the exception that has a pretty good uh, message. We can also have these properties here on this object. Now let's go back and start using this. So over here, instead of throwing a new invalid operation exception, let's say we want to instead throw a uh, overdraft exception. And now I have a compiler error. It says, hey, there is no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameter withdraw amount. And basically, I need to not give it a message anymore. I need to give it the starting balance, which is going to be balance, and the amount that we're trying to withdraw. And if I do this, it's actually going to throw an overdraft exception. Okay, So if I run this, my application is actually going to crash. But let's just take a look and see what happens. So I want to withdraw uh, $5,000. This should throw my overdraft exception. And it does. And there's no catch block for overdraft exception, so my application now pauses on the exception. It's kind of the default behavior of Visual Studio. And it tells me um, there's an overdraft exception. Your withdrawal would overdraft your, your account. Starting balance is uh, 4,200. Uh, withdrawal amount is 5,000. So here, that's the message coming in here. And I can actually view details. I can see details on this exception object, which includes the withdrawal amount and the uh, initial balance. Okay. So I have the information that, that would be really handy for me. But let's add a catch block for this. So let's say catch overdraft exception, and I'll give it a variable name here. And I'm going to say yeah, console right line ex message is great, but I'm going to put a breakpoint on here just to see what it looks like. We'll run it again with the debugger attached. I'll overdraft again because why not? And I've hit my breakpoint. And here, if I look at my exception, I see the two string here is giving me my message, uh, 42,000, or sorry, 4,200 and 5,000. Uh, and I see my balance and my uh, withdrawal amount are here. If I wanted to, I could also do a console write line of exception.balance, comma, or minus ex dot withdraw amount to if I, if I wanted to show the difference between the two of them. <laughs> I don't know why I would, but I'm just trying to show you that we actually knew, now have these properties on this object. Okay? So this is really how we, we created a custom exception. You'll do this if you have an exception that .NET doesn't really represent very well with the built-in exception types, and you want to be able to have a, a catch that really only handles that exception. Um, you'll do this if you want to add properties to an exception because the built-in ones don't. Um, and you know that's very helpful. Okay, so uh, this is one of the ways we could do this. Uh, the other way we could do this is we could actually uh, get rid of the constructor. We'll keep the default constructor, and we're going to set this to be init. So now when you're initializing an exception, you have to, well, you can provide the, uh, the balance and the withdraw amount. I'm actually going to change these to be required, which is a new thing we have in C Sharp um, 11 as of .NET 7 um, this fall. So now when I'm going in to create a new overdraft exception, I can use an inline initializer like this to provide some values to it. Okay. So now I can provide the balance equals uh, balance. <laughs> and the withdraw amount equals withdraw amount. 
Now, the downside of this is that I'm not actually specifying the message of the exception in this, um, in the way that this is, is implemented. Uh, I might be able to actually override that. Let's see if I can override that. Can I override the message? Okay, so I can. So I can say, um, this is an overdraft withdrew draw amount with balance of balance. We'll see what this does when we run it. So this should give me kind of a custom message here using this expression body member. Uh, so we're basically overriding the default message property uh, for the exception. So if we run this, overdraft, and we see we hit that, that breakpoint there, or that, that block here, I'll put the breakpoint back in there just so we can inspect the object. Yes, I do, 5,000, hit the breakpoint. Here we have our message is accurate, our balance is accurate, our withdrawal amount is accurate. So a couple different ways of creating things. Um, depending on your preferences, the old school style way was using a constructor. Nowadays, you can use the inline initializer, but you might want to use required and knit on the properties that you're adding. You might want to override the message as well. Uh, kind of your preference as to which one you'd like. But when we override, uh, when we create our own custom exceptions, we're able to catch them and do really our own logic without having to worry about stepping on anybody else's exceptions that they might be throwing. For example, an invalid operation exception might be thrown by some other related piece of code and I might hit this catch block without even really realizing it. So let me know what questions you have. Let me know what you'd like to see next, but uh, happy coding and enjoy.net.